So new year, new me, it's 2024 and it's time to give you guys an update on my progression in cybersecurity as a SOC analyst. This will be my second year in cybersecurity, so some of my responsibilities has changed as I gain more experience. So you guys might find it interesting to see. So in this video, I'll show you guys what my day in life as a SOC analyst looks right now in 2024. Hopefully it will give you guys an idea of what kind of responsibilities you might pick up as you progress your career. And who knows, it might inspire some of you guys as well. I'm also working from home 90% of the time, but generally there's no difference between working in the office and and working from home. As always, I'm keeping it real so none of that BS wake up 6 o'clock in the morning to go for a run. I'm too lazy for that. So the first thing I always do when I clock in is to start checking my calendar. In my opinion, it's probably the most important and underrated thing to do first because it sets the expectation of what your workday will be like. With that said, when I have like one or two meetings for the day, I feel a lot more happier and relaxed as I know I'll have more time to work through stuff that requires deeper focus. If you haven't seen my day in life video in 2023, my calendar was a lot more different compared to now. As I gain more experience, I've realized that I'm more involved in higher level meetings like scoping out for potential vendors, solutions planning, one-on-ones with SMEs and so on. At one point, my calendar week was so packed that it looks like my managers. Definitely not my favorite part, but it's part of the job, I guess. The next important routine I do is to check for alerts on our SOAR platform. In this particular case, Splunk has a SOAR solution and we have automations to ingest all the reported phishing emails so everything is processed automatically. So this example is what a reported phishing event looks like. Alright, so we're on Splunk's SOAR platform and we can see a bunch of stuff on the dashboard. This gives it an overview for statistics like number of events, time spent, and dollars saved with the automations in the last 7 days. What I usually do is go straight to the list of events and check if there are any new phishing reports. So what we have here is an event which is generated whenever a user reports an email as phishing. It looks like there's a lot going on but I generally focus on the left panel which shows all the automations which has run when this event was generated. We have a timeline of activities up here and if we go into the artifacts panel this is where the email gets stripped into different pieces called artifacts so we could have stuff like the urls found within the email or like other recipients what i usually do is to look for red flags in the email so i start off by looking at the subject this is clearly creating a sense of urgency with the number of exclamation marks the sender email looks okay so far the way they are addressing the user is kind of suspicious because it's saying good morning so you know it's kind of generic and it's probably a spam the next thing i do is to look for any hyperlink Thanks. If the underlying URL is different to the text, then we know it's malicious. So here you can see this URL has this domain, which is different to the domain of the sender. So this is another red flag. Just to double check, I would throw the URL into VirusTotal and do a quick scan. If there's more than one hit, then that's good enough for me to go ahead and block everything off. So I go into the approvals tab, which would have the prompts ready for me to block the sender and all the URLs within the email. The way these prompts are generated are through automations called playbooks. Just to give you guys an idea of what an automation looks like, it's basically a low-code solution where it's mostly drag and drop some functions, connect an API, and create some prompts for us to action. Let me know in the comments if you guys want to do a deeper dive into automations, or you can just check out this video for a general idea of how it works. Okay, all that usually takes like 1-2 to two hours, so once I've cleared out the backlog on the SOAR platform, it's time to look at any other alerts triggered in other systems. So Splunk is one of the more popular SIEM solutions out there, and basically what it does in a nutshell, is the ability to take log data from different sources so they can be used for alerting, monitoring, threat hunting, and so on. So this dashboard I've created allows me to monitor different systems we have in place for any detections and alerts. For example, this one is showing the users with high number of failed authentications, so it lets me know that I need to investigate them. All of these panels on the dashboard are created by Splunk search queries. So in this example, it's just pulling from a data model doing some filters, adding some metadata, and running some API. This entire search spits out some detection on suspicious IP addresses in our network, which we actively monitor and block. Now the search queries might seem a bit daunting to you guys, but I've also done up a video on Splunk Basics, so make sure to check that out as well. Alright, so the last daily routine I always do is to check for any tickets on our ITSI platform. Basically, this would be help desk tickets, and we would have some that are assigned to our queue, which we would need to work on. Most of the time, these tickets would be just a request to get access to a particular website or maybe a system. On on rare occasions, some users might raise an incident ticket regarding another user or a device that was compromised. These type of tickets would usually be escalated into a deeper investigation. So the process would be similar to an incident response where we have to check for IOCs on our systems. IOC stands for Indicator of Compromise. 
So some examples of compromise could be an increase in network traffic on a laptop which might indicate data exfiltration or activity during outside office hours which might indicate device takeover. Alright, so usually all these tasks will be done in the morning session. I usually tend to do tasks that require a higher level of thinking and focus around the early afternoon. I feel like I'm more energized after lunch, probably also because my morning coffee would have kicked in. So as we saw earlier, my calendar was more packed than usual because we're in the middle of achieving the ISO 2701, which means lots of meetings with lots of vendors to uplift our security solutions and meet the requirements. ISO 2701 is basically an international standard for managing information security. When a company achieves this standard, that means they are fully compliant with the latest framework and guidelines from a security perspective. This in turn would make the company more attractive to potential clients as they would know the data is more safe and secure compared to a non-compliant company. Now there are a lot of steps to get a company certified. One small part of the steps is to make sure all the applications in an organization undergo a complete security checklist. Here is an example of what a checklist would look like. Here we can see some example questions that we have to answer as part of the certification. Stuff like data encryption, backups and archiving. Not gonna lie, this stuff is super boring boring and I can't wait to get this over and done with. But at the end of the day, this is a very important experience to have under your belt as a SOC analyst, especially on your resume, so I'm really keeping my sanity because of this. Around this time, I would usually try and squeeze in some vulnerability remediations on our EDR solution. In this particular example, CrowdStrike is a very popular EDR solution which manages endpoint devices. So a simple explanation of what a vulnerability is on a device in this particular case is generally an application that is out of date and has a vulnerability. For example, if Microsoft Excel had a loophole where a threat actor can access the database through some macros, then that would be a vulnerability. This would be represented as a CVE number, which I won't get into because that's a whole lot of other topic. So in order to remediate these vulnerabilities, I just go on CrowdStrike and check for applications which require updates. The process will consist of identifying all the laptops that has the application version installed, then we push out a software update to those laptops and hope the user don't click on the post button. Just kidding, we can usually do live updates in the background for applications, but for system updates, please don't click postpone because that really makes our job in security harder. So while I'm on CrowdStrike, I'll show you guys what it looks like when we have a detection on an endpoint on an ADR solution. So for this particular detection, we can see CrowdStrike has classified this as malware via pub. It shows you the associated file that has triggered the detection. So we can see that this user downloaded an Autodesk key generator file. Not exactly sure why they did that, but I guess it doesn't really matter because usually those files would have viruses, so they just get automatically blocked anyway. We can see more details on the right panel where it shows the trigger hash, and also more information on the host details if we need to locate the device. So CrowdStrike has automatically blocked this detection, but if it wasn't, then I would just go in manually to add the hash to our IOC block list, and that would would remove the application. Entering late afternoon is usually the time for me to wind down and do some development work. Keep in mind my responsibility is skewed towards one half being typical SOC analyst work and the other half being development work, solely because I have a software engineer background and I enjoy doing development work. I guess it's kind of like a nice quiet therapy session for me. Like always, I'm frequently building dashboards whenever I need. For example, I've built this dashboard which summarizes the number of suspicious IP scans that we have received and blocked. Dashboards are actually really important in terms of like doing up reports to show our effectiveness in the security team to the higher ups. A lot of times, if you're unlucky, the upper management would treat the entire IT department, including the cybersecurity team, as a massive cost center. They might bring up things like, if we're not getting hacked, then why are we paying you? Or like, we don't get a lot of phishing attacks or infiltrations into our system. That means we don't need to worry about cybersecurity as much. Well, if you're one of these people in management, then we hate you. This is the reason why we bring up these stats and reports, just to show these people that we are, in fact, the backbone of the company, keeping things alive and safe. Anyway, that's my mini rant. This video took so long to censor out a lot of the confidential stuff just so I can show you guys as much as I could about my typical day in life. This is just an example of one of my days and of course they might change depending on what kind of work is pushed to me. I would say a lot of the things I do in the morning is the most consistent so far from last year and this year. So if you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Thanks for watching.